And the reality is you can dream of that million-dollar house, but the reality is you're never going to have it. You may dream of that large yacht, but the reality is you're never going to have it. So I, I really encourage people to dream, but you also need a plan, a system, a way of getting there. And so if I had to do it again, I might have gone the network marketing way. It makes more sense because the system's already built for you. The attorneys have checked it out for you. They have accounting systems. Hopefully, and not all of them are legitimate. I mean, there's, there's always good and bad network marketing comes and be clear on that. Yeah. And there's some bad people in network marketing, but there's bad people in anything. But the point here is this. For the average person, a network marketing business gives them a chance it gives them to take control of their lives, and that's the word. If you're not into, an, if you're not in the B quadrant, you've lost control of number one, your number one largest expense, which is taxes. The tax department tells you how much and when you pay it. If you're the B, you have some control and some dignity over that. So when I talk about what did we fight for, we fight for freedom. We also fought for the choices we have. The less, you know, if you have less freedom, you have less choices. And so on the B and the I side, simply gives you more choices. If you have more choices, you have more freedom. And that's what this country, the United States, was founded on. And I think that's what the rest of the world wants, is that freedom to have choices. So I said there's bullies who bully you around you know, militarily. That's horrible. There's people who bully you around mentally and emotionally. You know, the guy sitting next to you, why are you in a network marketing business? Well, if you let that guy bully you, then you're the loser. And the thing, best thing about a network marketing company is, is if you can stay strong five, ten years, you will become a completely different person. And I think the most important thing is not how much money you make in network marketing, but it gives you back your control of your life, your choices, and your dignity. And I think today that is priceless. And why do you think now in, in these economic times, why do you think it's so important now for people to start thinking about doing something different? Well, the reason you need to wake up right now is I think job security is a joke and your 401k and mutual funds, I hate to say it, if you think they're safe, you know, you probably believe in the Easter Bunny and Santa Claus. I mean, you can get angry at me, but somebody sold you that bill of goods. Mutual funds are risky for your financial future. If, and if you think they're going to be there, I mean, if you want to bet your life on the ups and downs of a stock market, I mean, that's your retirement you're betting on. You know, what happens if the stock market goes up and then comes crashing down again when you're 85 years old? You have no control. So I'm not saying mutual funds are bad. I'm just saying they're not safe and they're not smart. And I wouldn't bet my financial future. The thing I say all the time is never before in the history of the world have so many people bet their retirement on a stock market. That is insane. You think Social Security is going to be there to take care of you? You also believe in that Easter Bunny. And Medicare, your largest expense the older you get is health care. And that's expensive. It's already getting to the point, if you have money, you live. If you don't have money, you die. That's already happening in countries throughout the world. And it'll probably start happening here in America because there's too many people who are weak and wimpy and expect the government or the company to take care of them. I'd say it's wake-up time. If, you, if, if what I say sounds you know, rude and you know, tough to you. Well, I think that's kind of the world I see right now. Get tougher and get smarter. And that's what I'm recommending. And I think that's what network marketing offers so many people, that opportunity to do that financially for themselves. So why doesn't everyone go out and, and start their own business? I think it's a subject we've been talking about is fear. You know, you, I mean, I have a coward inside of me. I know that person very well. It's a person that, you know, when I was in Vietnam, the only battle was between you know, the person with courage and the coward. And, that, and that's the battle we all face. We all face it. And I think oftentimes is the coward asks other cowards and they get talked out of it and, or they go, well, why would you do that? And they get bullied into being a coward. That's one, real, one of the things, I, you know, school is important, but I used to have school teachers who would say to me, you know, Robert, if you don't get good grades, you won't get a good job. And I would have to stand up and say, good, I don't want a job. And they go, well, I mean, who is this? stupid kid, you know, and I'm going, I just... Doesn't want a job. I mean, what's his problem? Yeah, the point is I was just testing my ability to not get bullied, to not get pushed around. And I think if when people say what causes me to be, what's the number one asset of what causes me to be rich is that I've had the courage to stand up and fight for whatever I thought was right for me. I'm not saying it's right for everybody, but I didn't want a job. I didn't want to be an employee. And they go, well, the teacher was going, oh, you have to be one. I said, no, you have to be one. And then I'd, you know, she'd say, well, you don't have good grades. And I'd say, well, my bankers never asked me for my report card anyway. You know, what does my banker ask me for? My banker wants to see my financial statement. Why don't you teach me about financial statements? And, she, and they go, uh, 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 uh. 
So the point here is this, is I think today, most importantly, is you want to get into the business because you want your dignity back. You want to take control of your life. You want to be able to have the courage again to not care what other people bully you around so you can think for yourself. And you, you referred to networking as kind of a, as franchised individuals. You, can you kind of explain what you meant by that? Well, first of all, let me tell you about franchises. I said my, my dad, when he was 50 years old, got fired. You know, that was another motivator for me because I saw him get fired. If you see your dad get downsized or fired or blacklisted or bullied around, I think it changes your thinking. So my dad then took his retirement and bought one of these Never Lose franchises. And it was an ice cream. I won't mention the name. It was a famous, it is still today, a famous ice cream franchise, and he lost everything in it. See, a franchise cannot save you if you still don't have the mental and emotional toughness to withstand the world of the B quadrant there. So when network marketing is really about franchising the individual, but first it's got to make the individual strong. I call the B quadrant, you know, the gong show. In other words, when, if you're in the E quadrant, you expect people to protect you, you know. Oh, my boss will protect me. The union will protect me. My, you know, protect me. But you enter the B quadrant, that's like entering the wo- world of the sharks and the big bears and the gorillas. That's why I call it the gong show. If you're not successful in the B quadrant, boing, you're gone. Or, you know, you are the weakest link. Bye, you know, and all this. <laughs> the B quadrant is not fair and it's not equal. You know, I met people who say, that'd be like saying, I, I cut my wrist, I'm swimming in the ocean, I'll pray, I went did well in school, you know, I'm a good person. The sharks are still going to eat you out there. You know, there's no protection. So the B quadrant is really about first getting strong mentally, emotionally, and spiritually. And that's the most important franchise there is. So a network marketing organization, if they're worth their salt, will do their very best to make you strong enough to withstand the rigors of the B quadrant so that you can stand on your own two feet. You say in one of your books that network marketing levels the playing field. Well, the reason I like the level playing field is this, is that when I worked for the Xerox Corporation, because I didn't have an MBA, they didn't want to promote me. Oh, how ridiculous is that? I was number one in sales, but they because I won't you know, play the game. As my rich dad used to say, if you climb the corporate ladder, there's only one problem with it. The view's the same. You know, when you look up, there's a big fat butt right above you. <laughs> and and, and, you, and that guy's not going to move any faster, and you can't move past him because all of his buddies are above him. So even though I was doing extremely well in sales, you know, it didn't make any difference because I wasn't willing to, you know... <laughs> I just kept looking at this big butt in front of me, and I said, this is not what I want to do. So with network marketing, if you perform, you get paid. And if you don't perform, you don't get paid. And if you don't like that, then the business is not for you. But it is really about performance. You know, they say money talks and the rest walks. And that's what I love about network marketing is not your college degree. It's not the family you came from, your race, your uh, – attractiveness or whatever this stuff is that people and people do discriminate we all know that you know if you're pretty you have a better chance you're ugly you have a worse chance but it's really about performance money talks and the rest walks and so if you can't stand that then it really is not for you i mean i love competition some people hate it i love it and i want to be the best not because i want to beat somebody else i look at my competitor as somebody who's making me become better and the thing about network marketing is they want you to become better in the corporate world they don't want you because if you get better you threaten their job so it's a completely different uh, environment. So what is normal for some people? Normal is to play it safe and climb the ladder and wait your turn. That's abnormal to me. So Robert, any final thoughts for, for someone listening to this tape? I'm just saying give freedom a chance. You know, just give it a chance. Keep an open mind. Don't listen to your friends who are really timid and afraid and kind of wimpy. The best thing that I have is I have friends around me who want me to become rich. They encourage me to get richer. In my poor dad's family, I hate to say it, there are a bunch of college intellectuals, PhDs, and all this. They had this really bad attitude towards money, bad attitude. And I just didn't want to be like them. The rich don't exploit people. It's people who are intellectually ignorant about finances and money and world events that exploit people. The thing I didn't like about my father's friends is they actually kept people weaker. They said, well, you must have job security. You must play it safe. Don't take risk. They actually preyed upon your fear rather than have you overcome your fear. The best thing that happened to me in Vietnam was that I learned to control my fear. And instead of letting, letting the coward win, I let the person who was courageous win. And I think in this today's changing world, where what's normal is abnormal, 
where bullies persist next door to you and all over the place. I think you really do need to get stronger today. I think that's what network marketing offers. Bottom line, do you think network marketing is a perfect B business? For some people, but not for everybody. When Rich Dad used to say of getting rich was easy, everybody be rich. I think you find it in your heart and your soul and your guts. That's why when people say, what's the number one thing that allowed me to become rich is I didn't want anybody to tell me what to do. I wanted my freedom so badly. I didn't want job security. I wanted financial freedom. And it's a burning desire in my guts. Like even when today when somebody tells me what to do, I get angry. You know, if you like somebody telling you how much you can make and when you keep your job, when you come to work, well, then the network marketing business is not for you. It really isn't. But I hated that. I mean, I absolutely detest it. I want my freedom so badly, and that's what I fought for in Vietnam. And I think that's what people are fighting for right now, the freedom for those choices to live and think and do the way we want to live our lives. And that's what network marketing offers many people. It's our sincere hope that you enjoyed listening to this interview with best-selling author, multimillionaire businessman, and financial educator, Robert Kiyosaki. For more information on a company that might be a perfect business for you, please get with the person who gave you this recording.